Thank you for your patience. Okay, so we're gonna get started and have or the person who is going to present second be on deck first after I start everybody off. So just know that Margarita, you're gonna be on deck first. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you everyone for joining us for this exciting webinar, Discovering Resources as You Care for an Adult Living with a Disability, brought to you by the Caregiver Coalition of Northeast Florida, which is a program under Elder Source. My name is Rachel Weinstein. I am the Community Outreach and Coalition Coordinator for Elder Source, and I'm going to be facilitating this discussion today. We also have Andrea Spencer with us from Elder Source. She's the Vice President of Communications. Um, doing our slides for us is Jessica Del Rio. And um, we'll have, of course, our presenters who I will introduce shortly. So first, just a couple of housekeeping items. If you could advance to the next slide, please, Jess. I'll get started with that. Before I do that, excuse me, I wanna tell you a little bit about the Caregiver Coalition of Northeast Florida. The Caregiver Coalition of Northeast Florida's mission is to collectively elevate caregiving and improve the quality of life for caregivers in Northeast Florida. Coalition's vision is Florida is where all caregivers have knowledge of and access to resources that support the caregiver and those in their care. Next slide, please. couple of housekeeping items. This session is being recorded to be posted to our website for those who could not attend. Please type questions into the chat box. Questions will be answered once we reach the Q&A session at the end. Due to the number of attendees, we may run into technical difficulties we already have, so please be patient as we know you already have been <laughs> as we do our best to fix any issues. Once this seminar concludes, there's going to be three simple survey questions which will appear on your screen if you are joining us live. Please help us know how we did and what topic you'd like to see us address in the future by answering those questions. It literally will take you under 30 seconds to do so. Thank you so much for that in advance. And next slide, please, Jessica. Activating closed captioning. Once the host enables live transcript, you should see the live captions come across the bottom of your screen. If you do not see the captions or you wish to hide captions, select more at the bottom of the Zoom screen, click show subtitles or hide subtitles. If you want to adjust the size of the captions, select more at the bottom of the Zoom screen, click subtle subtitle settings. And then finally, to view the full transcript, click view full transcript. And this option will display the full transcript off to the right as it is happening live. Next slide, please. So we're gonna go ahead and go past Ms. Charlotte Temple who will be joining us second and advance all the way to our next speaker. So, Ms. Margarita Honeyfield is the Director of Programs and Services for the Center for Independent Living, otherwise known as SIL, Jacksonville. She's going to be talking about what is the Center for Independent Living. She's going to answer that question for us. Margarita, it's all yours. Good morning. As they said, my name is Margarita Honeyfield. Um, I'm the Director here at SIL Jacksonville of Consumer Services. I've been with the agency for... Um, over 16 years, going on 17. Um, and so uh, I'm going to tell you about our agency and what, what we do and how we help our community. Next slide. Next slide. All right, so who we are. So Jacksonville is um, a nonprofit agency who services people with disabilities. And our goal is to empower all people with disabilities to live an independent, oops, go back, sorry to live an independent life. Um, we believe in fully in the opportunity through, you know, helping people through self-determination, self-empowerment and equal access. I like to say we are not a do for agency. We are somebody to help guide and provide those resources. So our dis the disabled community can make an educated decision on what th they're doing in the community. Um, we are 501c3. We've been in service since 1978. We serve Baker Clay, Duval, Nassau, and St. John's County. 
We are community-based, non-residential, and we're consumer controlled. And what that means is that we are run by and for people with disabilities. So 51% of our staff and 51% of our board of directors are have a disability. Next slide. This is a map. There are actually stills that serve all of the county throughout the state of Florida. Um, they are all nonprofit. They're all consumer based, consumer controlled, community based, cross disability, non residential, and we provide array of services. Our services are defined basically by the communities that we serve. So as you can see, there's a cell that covers every bit of the state of Florida. Next slide. Um, how we help. Um, still tries to improve the quality of life for people with disabilities, addressing and removing those bar barriers for independence. So some of our pr programs include a Careers 360 program, which is providing assistance and preparing for and finding and keeping a job. And that is through contract with uh, vocational rehab. We have a deaf empowerment program. Um, we have a disability victim advocacy. We have FAST, Ready to Achieve Mentoring program, which is for youth with disabilities, sign language interpreting, temporary loan closet, work incentives and planning and assistance. On top of that, we have five core services, which actually six, which all the SILs throughout the state and actually the nation serve. That's information referral, independent living skills training, individual systems advocacy. There's peer counseling, transition with assistance from nursing home or other institutions, and transition for youth with significant disabilities after completion of the secondary education to post-secondary life. Next slide. So I'm going to hone in on some of the things that I, the programs that we serve that I feel um, connect the most with um, the CARE Coalition. And one of those is our Disability Victims Advocate, Advocacy Program. So through VOCO, um, which is the Victims Office, um, we have a um, advocate here on site within our agency to help people with disabilities who have been a victim of a crime. And those crimes can be anything from um, domestic violence to be from to theft. We help um, with getting you stabilized, getting a safety plan in place. We provide that support um, by a company to you know, your court hearings. Um, we help with signing up for the Florida Victims Ab um, Composition Program. We, the goal is just to help through that process of, of being a victim of a crime. Um, the next program, next slide. is our emergency port ser support services. So um, obviously, because we live in the state of Florida, emergency safety is just from a natural, natural disaster to a man-made disaster is really important. Um, and so our still does the annual emergency preparedness conference. I believe it's usually scheduled anywhere from May to July. Um, the goal is to um, help our individuals with disabilities develop and know what their emergency action plan is, provide with, um, provide those equipment, you know, deliveries or food de deliveries if needed after natural or man-made disaster. Um, we can deliver, let's say um, your hospital breaks because you've had flooding in your apartment. We are able, if we have one available, we are able to deliver it. Um, same thing with electric wheelchairs. Um, during COVID, we provide provided um, a lot of, of the personal protection equipment, which included the face mask and face shield. Um, obviously, we want to educate and connect people um, to the resources that they may need if they've been, um, you know, there's been a situation with that emergency that's happened. And then we provide those application assistance, you know, providing, um, you know, we help with the access. We're a community partner for the Department of Children and Family. So we help with um, housing, food safe, Medicaid applications, um, as well as trying to help with the process of advocating for social security if there's been an emergency. Next slide. Benefit screening. So um, if somebody who is who has a disability is looking to go back to work and um, needs to know how work is going to affect their benefits. We are contracted through Social Security to do work incentives and planning assistance. We have three certified work incentives count coordinators who provide that guidance and support. What we do is um, 
we pull what they call a benefit quarry from social security with your permission. Um, we develop your work history if you have one to see you know, what incentives you qualify for and how that work will really pertain to your um, employment and your benefit. I think a lot of times um, there's a lot of misinformation and I think we go to social security thinking they're gonna know everything about this and they don't um, and they give a lot of times wrong information and then you end up in an overpayment status um, or you feel like you can't work because now all of a sudden they're saying they're gonna you know pause or stop your check this is why it's important to work with a work incentive and planning and assistance program the great thing about our program is that you know if you're needing help just getting the ball rolling with reporting your wages we we do those things um, and then falling into that, if you're working and you are no longer, you know, you're completely independent of your benefits and you were getting a Medicaid waiver, there is actually a program in the state of, of state of Florida called the JP Pass program, which helps pay for, um, which helps pay for those personal care assistance that you may have had under the waiver that pays for that, um, through, uh, the funding of the license plates. I don't know if you've ever seen, there's some license plates for the state of Florida that actually fund this JP Pass program. So that is just one component. So there's the benefit screening and then we have that JP Pass. Next slide. The temporary loan closet. This has been in this agency for um, over 16 years. It's a, it is a durable medical equipment loan closet. Um, we loan anything from manual to electric wheelchairs to um, shower chairs to um, walkers, rollators, you know, everything that we get in our loan closet has been donated to our agency. In turn, we clean it, we repair it if it needs repairs, and then we get it back out to the community. Um, our website to put in those requests, if you need equipment, is um, the uh, www.stilljacksonville.org backslash TLC. Um, you can put Jack's TLC in the Google search box and it will pull us up as well. Um, the loans are, are, are completely free um, and we start at a 90 day. If it's something that you need indefinitely, um, we will donate that equipment to the individual if it's indefinite. Um, let's say things that I see is that maybe you guys have a, a manual for your lift and as a caregiver it's just too much for you to use that manual for your lift if we have an electric for your lift and you want it to trade it out that is something we could possibly do um, I think a lot of times insurance thinks you they know what we need and then they really don't because they haven't done that full assessment and that's where the loan closet can help as well um, we do not um, you know, we, we try to remove, it doesn't get processed through insurance on a cage. Um, on some cases, we are able to do those deliveries of that medical equipment if somebody is unable to get to the office. And there is no limit to the number of pieces of equipment that you can loan from us at one time um, if, when you're loaning from the program. And again, it is completely free. It's, it's, it is a program, again, community gives to us and we get back out. We get random things too, like um, diapers, we get diapers in, we get chucks in, um, all of that we give to the community as needed. Um, you know, maybe you didn't get enough diapers or finances are tight and you can't afford diapers at the end of the month, you can always call our agency and get diapers from us if we have them available. All right, next slide. So this is our actual temporary website, our temporary loan closet website. Um, this is what it looks like. And if you click the button that says request equipment, it'll actually take you to a Google form. It'll ask for some information. It'll ask what kind of equipment you need. Is it, do you need it for a bariatric equipment? Do you just need standard depending on your size? Um, and then our office will receive that and then respond to it as quickly as possible to let you know if we have it available. We'll send you the paperwork electronically. You can always fill it out when you get here, but if you send it, fill it out electronically, it'll make your lives easier in ours. Um, and then that helps us get the equipment out. So this is what our website looks like. Um, you can also call us to make donations. So maybe you have some old wheelchairs or old walkers that you're not using that um, you guys would like to get out of your house. <laughs> we do that and we will provide a tax 
letter so you can get a little bit of help on your taxes with that. Next slide. So the next program I want to talk to you is about the FAST program, and that is the Florida Assistance um, with Services and Technology program. This is that assistive technology. So we have the loan clause that used to be at Hope Haven, now it is with us, and we loan those devices out for you to try out for 30 days. Um, and that includes things like maybe you need a can opener because there's dexterity issues. Um, maybe, let's see, um, maybe you want to try an app out um, that you, you know, the doctor has said might help you or therapist has said and you want to try it out before you commit to it. We loan that out for 30 days to you. And then um, from there, let's say you decide to purchase it and you need help. The FAST program has its own loan program. So they do loans that are affordable. They take into account that many of our, um, the clientele are on um, limited incomes or maybe they have a tight budget. So it's not something that's completely out of, out of, um, you know, out of your budget. They try to make those payments doable. So that is what this program is. So it's mobility aids, visual aids. We are also a fast reuse, reutilization program as well. So we can, um, we loan out equipment that way as well. So they FAST actually has on their website, the Florida program has a basically a Craigslist for uh, medical equipment that you can put your equipment on there as well as find equipment that um, maybe you're looking for within the state of Florida, somewhere else that might help you out. That's the first, so it's that try before you buy kind of program. Next slide. And this is our website for that program. It just talks about, you know, you can get scheduled training, um, a demonstration on those devices, just information and assistance on what kind of devices are out there that might help with your specific disability. Um, and it, it is really a fabulous program. They have readers, they have all kinds of stuff in there. So it's great. Next slide. So this goes back to that Jimmy Pat, that James Patrick personal assistance, which is the JP Pass program. Um, it is it was the pilot project in 2002, and again, it's to help those people with significant disabilities who have been working and want to maintain that competitive employment and need a personal assistance services. The great part is, as a person with a disability, they you you get to hire them who you want to do that. Um, and they help pay for that, um, those services. So you're, you pay out of pocket and basically they refund you what you're paying out of pocket for the personal care assistant. Um, and you just sign up, you can go to our website at Phil Jacksonville um, or backslash JP Pass and sign up for those services. It will take you through the application process. It is, it is a really great program. Next slide. That's it. So these are our funders. We get funding through the Administration for Community Living, um, Social Security Administration, Brooks Rehabilitation. Um, our van that we use to deliver um, durable medical equipment and to pick up donations, it, through, it was funded through uh, Farah and Farah. And we are grateful for that van for the two years during COVID when um, we were um, you know, not being able to see each other, we were able to do a lot of stuff with that van, including food services. Um, the other thing I'd say we have in-house, if needed, we do have a small food pantry, so our consumers um, are eligible for that. Um, during the holidays, we do give gift baskets to our, our, our families who are in need within our community, who um, through the disability community. Um, we really just firmly believe in empowering people with disabilities through our services. Um, and just providing that guidance and support. Um, our informational referral program will help if you're lost and you don't know where to go next when you're looking for services or helping getting those services. Our goal is to connect you to those resources. So if you're stuck, you can always call us at 904-399-8484. We'll connect you to whomever or whatever services you need within the community that can help you with being that empowered person with a disability. And that's it for Still Jacksonville. Thank you so much, Margarita. Such amazing, the important information. I love that loan closet, by the way. That's just the coolest. Thank you so much. Um, if you could go to the next slide, please, Jessica. 
we're going to move forward with. We've got our technical difficulties solved. So Ms. Charlotte Temple is going to be on deck and let me introduce her. Thank you so much for showing this slide, Jessica. Okay, thank you very much. So may I introduce Ms. Charlotte Temple. She is the Vice President of Advocacy for the ARC Jacksonville. Charlotte is going to be talking to us about planning for the life of an individual with a disability. Charlotte, it's all yours. It's good to be here. Um, good to have you. And I'll just tell you as a caregiver that's been on all sorts of sides of the uh, story, uh, I cared for my mother. Uh, she passed away not long ago as 101. I was her weekend and evening support. And then I have a 31-year-old daughter with Down syndrome who continues to live at home, but uh, has a pretty independent life. But anyway, uh, so for all the caregivers out there, I applaud you. It's a, a wonderful journey uh, that sometimes uh, it's great to have be able to be support to individuals that we love. But anyway, uh, with the ARC Jacksonville. I've worked here uh, about 20 years. I've been in the field of uh, advocacy for about 30. And so we'll go to just skip the next slide and go to the following slide. Uh, and at the ARC Jacksonville, uh, we specialize primarily in individuals with developmental disabilities or those individuals who need lifetime supports. Uh, so that's kind of our specialty area. We have, we serve about 500 people daily. Uh, through our agency, and we employ about 150 staff, but we also have an additional 30 AmeriCorps members and six VISTA members that help provide services in the Jacksonville community. Next slide, please. I'm going to talk primarily about the department that I run, and it's the information and referral and support services that we provide to families, individuals with disabilities, their caregivers, uh, guardians, or circles of support. Our ASK program, which stands for Advocacy, Support, and Knowledge, provides information about community resources uh, for individuals with disabilities uh, throughout their lifespan from early identification. Sometimes we even speak to families who have um, a child, an infant, uh, uh, anyway, diagnosed prenatally with a disability, and we help them work through those processes. And then we support individuals and their families and caregivers uh, all the way through the entire lifespan uh, after that. We expand awareness and promote partnerships between families and schools and other agencies and services throughout the community. We have uh, three self-advocacy support groups that we uh, facilitate, and we provide training workshops and we work on collaborative conferences with the community um, throughout the year. We just finished a Tools for, I mean, a uh, Connecting the Dots conference and upcoming is a Tools for Success conference March 3rd. Uh, if you want more information about that, just uh, connect with us and we'd be happy to share that information. Um, we have reduced cost guardian and guardian advocacy services, uh, attorney services for members of the ARC. And that's $400 if you have an individual with developmental disability who needs an attorney to represent them in court for that, um, let us know. Uh, we have trust services. We do spe supplemental special needs trust. And then we have a referral services for low-income housing uh, for individuals with developmental disabilities. That's kind of limited as to when there's an opening or a vacancy available in a tax credit funded low-income housing. We also have an email listserv that we send out a lot of information to families. And then we have another listserv that we send out to a lot of professionals and other organizations that serve people with disabilities on a regular basis. If you want to join one of our email listservs, uh, connect with us. Um, our email is here, uh, address ctemple at arcjacksonville.org, or uh, we can provide that to you at a later time also if you're interested in those things. Next slide. I will show you that on our website, if you go to arcjacksonville.org, 
then uh, if you click on the family um, resources tab, then it can get you to our guardianship application packet if you want to utilize the services of an attorney for $400, which is a very reduced fee. Uh, if you want more information about our trust services, but the main thing um, that we have there, if you look at the arrow on the left-hand side, a little bit down the screen, it says the path. We have a 70-page document that helps you um, learn how to negotiate a lot of the government agencies and other things uh, that may be of interest to you. Uh, and you can reach that uh, document, download it, or just look at it live on our website. And if you'll go to the next slide, this gives you uh, an idea of what the document looks like and the table of contents. We even compare um, tools that you can use to put uh, resources in that won't count as a resource for Medicaid, Medicaid waiver, if you're on a Medicaid waiver program, and um, for supplemental security income. We talk about ABLE accounts and comparing different kinds of trust in there, as well as uh, the local content contact information for your local offices of Social Security, how to apply, how to understand disability determination, how to apply for the uh, Agency for Persons with Disabilities Medicaid waiver, or how to negotiate services within their programs. Uh, and we also talk about all the other waiver programs that are offered in the state of Florida, uh, the long-term care waiver that you enter through Elder Source, uh, as well as some that are administered strictly through the Agency for Healthcare Administration. But it's a lot of different information that uh, you might find useful as a caregiver, because sometimes it's not just knowing that that agency exists, but like Margarita said, with Social Security and understanding your benefits, it's using a benefit planner through uh, the Center for Independent Living. But if you don't know that those are things you can ask for or that they're available, that sometimes as a caregiver, we're lost just because we don't know about it, or we don't know the magic words that you have to say when you when you call them or speak to them. And so sometimes just knowing how to negotiate those things are important. So we've kind of put some help information in here that you it may be available on people's website, but sometimes you just don't understand it. So it helps you in kind of plain language understand that. Next slide. We have a new program. It's called Life Planning and Management. Um, we help people develop a life path for their son or daughter or the person that they're caregiving for their entire lifespan. This includes as they age, the different life stages that they'll go in through, uh, and it even help people understand their own life stages. Because as a caregiver, um, I realize that I may not be able to be the caregiver even for my lifetime, much less for the lifetime of my daughter who was more than likely going to outlive me. Um, we help people understand more than just looking at their financial planning, more than just looking at the legal planning, but also all the social, emotional, end of life, and all of the life stages, as well as help them think about who's going to do what when we're no longer capable or no longer here to do that, and throughout their son or daughter or the individual they're providing care for through their lifetime. And then kind of separate from the life planning, because a lot of people do letters of intent. They do some kind of life plan. Sometimes they do their wills, estates, and trust documents. And, but they don't really think about if there's other family members or other people that they think can do that for them. Or if there's not, who's going to manage that when they're no longer able to do that? So the ARC Jacksonville started to uh, engage in management services for people who want someone to do some of the uh, re, um, eligibility processes, the recertification processes, we want them to begin to take over guardianship or guardian advocacy uh, services for them. Now, you know, don't, aren't capable or are not wanting to provide the representative pay services or other things like that. So we actually can do some, some case management services at this time. A lot of those services though are at a cost. Um, 
So unfortunately, we're looking for funding. It's a new program and we're looking for funding to help us to be able to do it at no cost for people. Next slide. We, Art Jacksonville has uh, quite a number of day programs. We have day programs on the west side, currently on the downtown location. And uh, we have a community day program that's operated on the east side or the beaches area of town. We also have a uh, employment program called Triumph Industries, where everyone working in that program is working at uh, minimum wage or above, um, in addition to our life skills or our seniors program called SOAR, just a recreational leisure program. And then we also have mental health day treatment programs for those with a mental health diagnosis who need uh, more intensive services, sometimes coming out of a residential program for mental health or other type services like that. Next slide. We have full employment services uh, funded through uh, contracts with vocational rehabilitation. And then after vocational rehabilitation walks away with someone who's fully employed in the community and uh, competitive employment, we do follow along services usually through the Agency for Persons with Disability Med Waiver to ensure that that employment's successful throughout the lifespan. That even works for people who are on the waiting list through their employment and, and uh, enhancement program. And then we also engage in uh, free young, uh, summer youth pre-employment transition services. And coming in the fall, we'll have our career campus opening um, in the fall of 2023 for individuals 18 years of age and above. In residential services, we have five group homes located throughout the city of Jacksonville. Uh, we have a number six group home opening in the in the spring of 2023. Uh, it's a unique group home in that they will specialize in individuals who have a dual diagnosis of developmental disabilities and a mental health. It's also very unique and individuals in that home will be living in a an apartment style, which they'll have a their bedroom and a a living room, and then they'll have like a, a efficiency a kitchen there, but they'll also have uh, services and supports available to them 24 hours a day. And um, they will also have food services available to them if they don't want to prepare, you know, uh, small meals in their own apartment. Then we have um, our opportunities for, and probably look at the next slide, because I think the village, nope, not yet. We'll talk about our other residential service in a minute, but no, go to the next slide. Uh, we have a summer life program uh, where individuals can come live and an uh, an independent living immersion program for four weeks and learn all the things that it takes to be able to support yourself in your own apartment with some, board, some supports. Um, it's not like a camp. It is more about learning how to unstop toilets and change light bulbs and be safe in the community as well as safe in uh, your kitchen and some cooking and other type skills, you do your own laundry. I mean, there's just, it's a real training program for four weeks. You have to be at least 18 years of age to attend that program. And then we have, uh, I mentioned earlier, the community day program we have, which is Explore, is community education in the community. They uh, can do things, uh, volunteering, art, technology. It's where you sign up for classes. There are half-day classes. You can sign up for two half-day classes in a day and attend for a full day. Uh, some are pre-employment, finance, uh, just personal enrichment, but it, the actual classrooms are all over the community and you sign up for those. Then we have Club Arc, which um, is a Friday night out with friends. We have uh, that on the east side with dancing, bingo, and uh, special events and prizes. It's from 7 to 10 or 9 p.m. on the east side. We're reopening it post-COVID on the west side, which is uh, close to West Connect and Blanding intersection. And it's from uh, 6 to 9 
they serve pizza, dancing, live uh, DJ, and lots of other exciting things going on. And so it can be a night out with friends, uh, or it can be a little bit of respite for a caregiver. Next slide. We have our college program at the University of North Florida for individuals with intellectual disabilities. You can sign up for a two-year program or a four-year program. Um, it usually serves only 18 to like 30-year-olds uh, in that program because it's an inclusive program on the campus and we want to keep it well inclusive with the age group and the age range of other students on campus. They do enroll in the college and our students uh, in audit classes. Next slide. We have our specialized aging support services that are beginning to start in the spring of 2023. If you want to get on the uh, list for that, what we're realizing is this is really one of the first generations of individuals with developmental disabilities that are leaving, living on and well into adulthood and living, living really normal lifespans, but some are aging prematurely. Uh, specifically with individuals with Down syndrome, there's early onset dementia and Alzheimer's that is hitting close to 60% of those individuals living into uh, adulthood uh, or well into adulthood. We're seeing signs of that at the age of 40, sometimes at 50, but it's well below the population that we normally see served in things like memory care or that caregivers are even expecting to um, experience in those early ages. And so we're starting a program um, in the spring that's going to really be uh, looking at uh, specialized aging support for those that are living at home with their families, uh, living in their own homes or their own apartments uh, with supports already, but needing those specialized aging supports to age well. Next slide. The Ark Village is their other residential option. It is a rental property and it specializes in those individuals or actually advertises to those individuals with developmental disabilities. You either come with your own supports uh, that come through the Agency for Persons with Disabilities Medicaid waiver for supported living coaching and other things that help you live out in your own home or apartment successfully. Uh, with a developmental disability or you purchase private supports. Uh, the main thing that the uh, residential property wants to make sure of is that you are living independently um, with the supports you need. We don't want people who can't remember to pay their rent on time to be uh, evicted for non-payment of rent. We don't want them to fail their inspections from the low-income tax uh, funding source that comes in and spots, monitors uh, their safety and uh, the well kept up of the property and things. And people can be evicted through that portion of the low income tax credit dollar funding source if the individuals living there can't maintain their apartments. So we want to make sure everybody living there does have the appropriate supports, but it is not a facility. It's not assisted living. Uh, people either purchase their own supports uh, individually or they uh, come in with Medicaid waiver supports to live there. But we have 121 units. There's about 150 people on a waiting list to move in. Uh, but it's a gorgeous place, community center, swimming pool, hot tub, and lots of other things uh, that uh, makes it a great place to live. I'd love to live there if they won't let me. <laughs> Next slide. You can become a part of the ARC if you want to, volunteer to help us, uh, enrich the lives of our clients, attend events, follow us on Facebook, or advocate uh, in any way that you can for greater inclusion for those with disabilities in your community and in our community where we all live. That's kind of it. Any questions? <laughs> Forgot to take myself off mute. Thank you so much, Charlotte. That was amazing. Such important information. I, I think that the path that you talked about incredibly important. And don't worry if you were trying to take furious notes for everyone listening. Um, 
you're going to have a, um, an email sent to you with access to the slide deck and other handouts that uh, some of our presenters have. Um, all of this information will be made available to you. So relax and, and rest assured that this information will be provided to you along with this recording. So um, if you could go to, we're going to start the, the Q&A portion now. If you have put any questions into the chat or if you'd like to do so now for our presenters, we will address them. I'm gonna be looking at the chat. I know that I've got some questions. So anybody else wants to start? Um, I, I do actually have a question for Margarita to start us out um, from Center for Independent Living. So um, is there a cost for services? No, there is not a cost for services. Everything is free um, and uh, from our services. So there's no, there's no cost at all. No matter what socioeconomic background you're from, there's no cost. Okay, excellent. Thank you so much, Margarita. And we have a question from uh, Nancy who asks, she says that she lives in Flagler Beach. Is the same available for us through ARC of Volusia? Each ARC has different services that they offer. And so you would have to contact ARC of Volusia and see what all services they provide. I will say that our inf information and referral program uh, and community connections is somewhat unique to our agency here at ARC Jacksonville, but um, contact them and see what all they offer. Now, ARC Florida has a lot of services that are global across the state. Uh, you can look at the ARC Florida um, and see what all they have to offer. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, we've gotten a nice comment. This is wonderful information. And thank you um, from Shirley Brill. Thank you, Shirley. Um, Deborah asks, uh, she says, 24-year-old end-stage cancer patient living at home with stairs, but no handrail. What resources are available to install and possibly help with the cost? Um, that is a really great question. I would ask, my next question is, are they on Medicaid or Medicare? Because sometimes Medicaid or Medicare will actually pay for that. Um, if not, you're more than welcome to call our agency at um, and ask for information or referral. Um, they may be able to connect you with like Builders Care or some other company that can do it at minimum to no cost of installing those handrails. But I would definitely talk to your insurance. Um, sometimes we don't know it, but Medicaid or Medicare will cover that. I actually have through Elder Source, I can share one resource, which is our senior to senior program, um, which is a uh, a fund that is available through uh, several grants that we have for uh, financial crisis situations and that really qualify as something urgent. And this may be a case for that. So please, um, at the end, I'm gonna be giving a number to Elder Source as our, for our helpline and as well our, our um, website. And I would love for you, Deborah, to reach out to Elder Source and see what we can do to help as well. Another resource may be if they live in the city of Jacksonville, if they'll call the city of Jacksonville Disabled Services Division, uh, because sometimes they have funding for things like uh, ramps and sometimes some other things that may help. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Charlotte. Um, D. Maz X asks, is there help for people with dementia and the disabled? I'm sorry that she says, that, or he says, missed the beginning. Um, what's near 32224 Jacksonville and Duval County? Are we talking about the caregiver or an individual they're caring for who has a developmental disability? So if you could put the answer to that in the chat, yes, or who are you? talking about the person who is disabled or the caregiver. Let's see if there's a response Not yet. I, I certainly, I, at the end, I will uh, both. So the answer is both. 
Well, the caregiver, if that probably is obtaining services through uh, elder source and seeing what's available to them for the individual with the disability they're caring for, um, they can begin contacting the Art Jacksonville for that if, if they have a developmental disability. Um, it, or even I think other types of disabilities that may have been, you know, earlier onset. Um, we might can assist with that as we're as we're opening up our programs. Terrific. Yes, uh, absolutely. Um, for, for many of these questions, um, our tagline at Elder Sources start here for help. So if mm -hmm. it's not definitively, you know, answered by any of our panelists, start with us. We can help connect you to resources and information throughout all the seven counties that we serve, um, which includes Duval, Nassau, Clay, St. John's, Volusia. Um, that's not a complete list. What yeah. other questions? These are great questions. No one has one. I have, I have a couple more. Let's see here. Um, Margarita, I would like to ask, um, is there eligibility for services? Um, you just have to self-disclose whether or not you have a disability for our agency. Um, so anything that is on our intake uh, questionnaire is really just for grant purposes. So we ask about income, but it's not um, necessary for services. So everything is free. Um, all you have to do is self-disclose. You might be temporarily disabled. Maybe you know, you're a caregiver and you broke your leg and you need crutches or you're going through, you know, your or a knee scooter. You know, we are here to provide those um, on through our loan program. So everything is is totally free, and there is other than having a self disclosed disability. That's it. Thank you for that. Um, we have a question um, from Nancy who says, "I am seventy seven, the caregiver. My daughter has a dis uh, developmental disability, fifty four. I need help at home. I haven't been able to find help." Uh, so can anyone answer that? And um, Nancy, I will reach back out to you about um, you're trying to get in touch with Elder Source. I'd like to know more about that. Do they have any sort of waiver or have they ever applied for a developmental disabilities waiver for their uh, daughter? So let's see, can you type it into the chat and I will read the answer to that. because either that or the long-term care waiver may be able to assist them to get uh, care in the home because those are all home and community-based waiver services, um, depending on the need and the age of the caregiver and all that may make uh, okay. a good bit of difference. So um, Nancy's saying moved here from New York, um, had help there. And, but you have to reapply in the state of Florida. Okay. They don't, they don't transfer from state to state. Okay. So elder source would be from 18 to whatever age, if you have a disability. Mm -hmm. um, agency for persons with disabilities would be those disabled prior to age 18 with a developmental disability. And uh, then they will provide support throughout the lifetime uh, for that individual in the home. Um, there is a waiting list for both. But uh, if there's a crisis, I know that Elder Source goes on, you know, urgency of need and the Agency for Persons with Disabilities, Developmental Disabilities Waiver also goes on, you know, uh, extreme need first. Thank you, Charlotte. And Nancy, for your other issue, um, at the end, I'm going to be sharing my, um, uh, my contact information. Please reach out to me so that I can talk to you about um, what we offer to and, and connecting with us. Mm -hmm. And then um, on the Agency for Persons with Disabilities website, which is www.apd.myflorida.com, there under the tab that's pr provider, if you scroll down there, uh, there is a Clarient, it's Q-U-L-A-R-A-N-T. I don't know how they pronounce it from that spelling, but 
provider um, directory and you can go in that provider directory and you can find people that are enrolled in the Agency for Persons with Disabilities Medicaid waiver. They're trained, their background screened. It, I don't know what the disability is, but you could find those that specialize maybe in autism or in something else, depending on what you're looking for, that can provide in-home supports uh, that would be specialized. Now, that would probably be pi private pay because you if you've never applied and don't have the waiver yet, but at least it would give you a vetted group of individuals that are trained in developmental disabilities specifically. And you can do that by zip code, by county, and that's on the Agency for Persons with Disabilities website. Thank you, Charlotte. Latonya asks, are there any programs to assist a senior that is blind with transportation to doctor's appointments and shopping and with meal prep at home? I would do, uh, for transportation, I would do the, uh, what's depending on the county. In Duval County, it's the Jacksonville Transportation Authority through their uh, connections or their transportation disadvantage services, and they have door-to-door -door support for that. Uh, they also have uh, Conne Connections Plus, which you only have to call two hours ahead of time, and it's door-to-door. -door. If it's to a doctor's appointment and you have Medicaid, Medicaid will provide that transportation. If you don't have Medicaid, you're probably looking at the Connections transportation in Duval County. Uh, and then in other counties, there is transportation disadvantaged. Um, through Clay County, through St. John's County, uh, and you can connect their uh, service providers. Excellent. Thank you. Uh, Deborah writes, we as a family are struggling with exactly how to deal with our patients' emotional swings. We don't feel we know how best to respond and help her, the patient. Is there any type of group or family counseling available for this and to maybe help us deal with our emotional, our emotions too. Again, this is the 24 year old end stage cancer patient. But is it for the 24 year old or for the father? Uh, she says this is for the 24 year old end stage cancer patient. Uh, I would suggest some counseling or, or or therapy, and they may could get that if they're in stage through hospice um, or from some other services that they may could enroll in. I I would absolutely um, call Elder Source as well. We can connect to reach into the community. That's what we do. So. Um, please, you know, stay tuned because I'm going to be sharing all the ways to contact us through our helpline, which is 888-242-4464. Um, but you'll see that at the end on the slide. And we have a website. We can connect. That's what we do. That's exactly what we do. Um, um, let's see here. I am struggling to help my elderly father-in-law who needs help with ADLs. This is um, activities of daily living. Um, can Elder Source recommend home health agencies? So we have community partners. Um, if you call us, we certainly can um, recommend. We work with A Aging True is one of our community partners. Um, we will absolutely connect you to appropriate home care. Uh, let's see. Oh, Deborah, uh, I think just right, right back. The, the patient is 24 year old end stage, but I feel we need help understanding how best to respond to her emotions and needs. Absolutely, these are these are common um, issues that counselors take on, um, and we have a, a wealth of mental health services that we can connect you to, depending upon the county in which you live. So stay tuned again. You know if that Elder Source Helpline number is the one to call that 888-242-4464. We will reach into the community in which you live and help to connect you to resources. Um, let's see here, what else do I have? 
You're welcome, Pablo. Uh, says thank you. You're welcome, Deborah. Some great questions here. Um, okay. So if you could go to the next slide. Oh, let's see, I've got one more. Uh, didn't know Medicaid can pay for transportation. How do, we, how do they access that resource? Well, this, our elder source helpline um, is one way to start. Uh, it's, I'm gonna sound like a broken record, but these, this is what we do. This is why we say start here for help because we reach into to the communities in which you live to access our community partners uh, and connect you to things like the transportation. I know that. But if you have Medicaid, you call your Medicaid provider because you're with uh, a managed medical assistance program here in the state of Florida and that Medicaid provider is who has to provide your transportation. Mm. And so you call them directly and say, we have a doctor's appointment and uh, can't drive. And Medicaid is responsible for doing that and making sure you get to the doctor's appointment on time and all the other stuff because they're also funding the provider. Excellent. Thank you, Charlotte. Always the wealth of information. I think we've got a new question submitted. Let's see. Nope, that's it. Um, so the contact information that I keep referencing for Elder Source, it, our toll-free helpline um, is the place to begin, 888-242-4464. As well, we have a website, myeldersource.org. Elder Source is on Facebook. Uh, have a we have a YouTube channel and we're even on Instagram and the Caregiver Coalition, which is the program bringing you this webinar today, uh, which is under Elder Source, also has a website caregivercoalition.org. We also are on Facebook. We're not on um, Instagram, but we do have a YouTube channel. So. Um, these are the ways to reach us. I didn't put my own contact information um, down there, Nancy. I think I, I referenced that you'll see that at the end. But if you would call the helpline, um, my own, let me put in the chat box to everyone here, my office line if, or my email address, maybe that would be everybody. So I'm going to write in the chat box right now my email address. If questions weren't answered or if you have something, a question about Elder Source, um, you haven't gotten answered, you haven't gotten in touch with somebody, please reach out to me. It's rachel.weinstein at myeldersource.org. And then I'm going to even put my office line, 391-6603. So that is how to reach me. Um, generally speaking, it's best to reach our helpline or you can go to uh, myeldersource.org and submit an issue or question. You can do the same through the caregivercoalition.org's website and I get those emails as well. They all, they all come to one or the other. will either come to me or to someone who sees that and get you the answer that you're looking for. So lots of ways to reach us, phoning us, helpline, emailing, website, social media. So we are meant to be seen and we want to hear you. Um, such excellent questions. I, um, if you could go to the next slide, Jessica. Thank you so much to our panelists, to everyone listening. Um, if you are listening live, right after we end today, there are going to be three really quick, it's going to look like sort of like this on, on the bottom, it's just not the actual survey, um, quick questions that are going to appear on your screen as soon as the webinar ends, and having your answers will help us bring you future topics that you most want to know about. We would love to hear your thoughts about what other topic you'd like us to address, because we really are listening. This brought to this is brought to you today, this topic, because of the last topic that we did where somebody said, hey, what about this? And that's what we're doing today. So we, we are listening. Um, enormous thanks to Jessica Del Rio for helping us with the technical aspects behind this, to Andrea Spencer of Elder Source, of course, to our presenters today, Margarita Honeyfield um, and Charlotte Temple. You guys are just wonderful. If anyone has anything to ask that hasn't already been addressed, please don't hesitate to reach out 
to Elder Source to me directly. I will make sure to follow up with you very quickly. <laughs> We're getting thumbs ups and claps. I love it. Love this feature. If anyone has anything else, you can write it in in the chat box. Otherwise, thank you, thank you, thank you, everyone. We're actually done early today. So go about your day. It's beautiful outside. So get out there and enjoy the day. And we really look forward to hearing from you. Bye, everybody.